All right, so here we see a question from 2014 where it says a student is given the task of determining the iodide content of tablets that contain potassium iodide and an inert water-soluble sugar as a filler. Tablets dissolved in 50 mils distilled water. There's an excess of 0.2 molar lead nitrate, lead 2 nitrate, that's added to the solution. We get a yellow precipitate to form, which is filtered, washed, and dried, and the data is shown in the table above. This is our good friend gravimetric analysis. And so you can see the data there, and hopefully you notice that there was, you know, we had a, a first drying, a second drying, and a third drying, very typical of gravimetric analysis. So we can make sure that it's, you know, that the precipitate we have is completely dried, no more water. And so we should kind of know what's going on. We've got potassium iodide. Potassium, of course, one of our always soluble and we've got lead to nitrate. Nitrate, one of our always soluble. And so when we look at that, we're wondering, is it going to be potassium nitrate that is our um, precipitate, potassium nitrate? Well, heck no, those are both always soluble. Or is it our lead iodide? And for sure, that's what it's gonna be. Now we have to pay attention because we see that it is lead to iodide. So part A here for the chemical reaction when the precipitate forms write a balanced net ionic equation for this reaction. So we've got the lead 2 ion reacting with two of our iodides to form the PBI2. Now if to be super dope fantastic you might want to put aqueous for the ions and solid for the lead 2 iodide but not necessary. It didn't say must include state symbols. Now, why is our reaction best represented by a net ionic equation? Any precipitate reactions, um, redox reactions, stuff like that, why do we want a net ionic? Because it shows us what's actually happening in the reaction. It shows the formation of the precipitate from the ions, and it excludes our spectator ions. Now, you wouldn't have to say K plus and, and NO3 minus, but, you know, mentioning that the spectator ions are left out is probably a good idea. Now, here's the part B says, explain the purpose of drying and weighing the filter paper with the precipitate three times. I mentioned that earlier. We really want to make sure all of the water has been removed. And we know that that is happening once we see consecutive constant mass measurements. Now, part C, in the filtrate solution, is the concentration of the potassium iodide greater than, less than, or equal to the nitrate ion? Justify our answer. Well, potassium and nitrate are both spectators, so there must be a hint somewhere in our information as to why we should know this. And the hint up here is our lovely friend, the word excess. There's an excess of the lead to nitrate that is added. And since we know that there's an excess of the lead to nitrate, we know that there should be more nitrate than potassium. All right, so that, once you see a question like that, like, geez, there's gotta be a reason they expect me to know this. And that was the reason, that lovely excess. Part D and E, some good friends, calculate, calculate. So calculate the number of moles of precipitate that is produced in the experiment and the mass percent of the iodide in the tablet. So moles of precipitate. So we have to come up here and make sure we know what data we're looking at. We know that the dried filter paper is 1.462. And then you need to know which of these masses should you choose. And I would choose the third dry drying because 1.698 looks like that's our settled on constant mass. And so, oh, sorry. <laughs> trying to manipulate these without my mouse. All right, so 1.698 grams is our dried filter paper with the precipitate. And we subtract out the mass of the filter paper, so I get 0.236 grams of my lead to iodide. Now, the question says calculate the moles so now I have to switch that to moles using the molar mass of my lead to iodide. 5.12 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. Probably a good place for a sig fig check. 
When we subtract these two numbers to the thousandth, we should get an answer to the thousandth. And then our moles, we should have three numbers in our mole calculation. Calculate the mass percent of iodide. Well, there's a couple ways to do this. First, we can just look at the formula lead to iodide. All right. And so in my moles of lead to iodide, there are two moles of iodide ions. So I switch that to moles. I use the molar mass, and it gives me the grams of iodide in one tablet, 0 0.130. Another way you could do this is when you look at the formula, PBI2, 254 is the mass accounted for by the iodide ions. 461 is the total mass. And so that gives us the percent iodide, which then takes us to the 0 0.130 grams of iodine. So that 254 divided by 461 gives you the percent iodide, which is 55%. So the 0.236 times that 55% gives us 0 0.130 grams. And so you can either go down and figure out the grams of iodide in that way by the percent iodide, or you can, again, say, since I know how many moles of lead to iodide, there's two mole of iodide in every mole of lead to iodide, and then multiply by the mass. But now the final step is calculate the mass percent of the iodide. So there's 0 0.130 grams of iodide in one tablet. Our tablet weighed 0.425 grams. And that, again, was up in our data table, 0.425 grams. So 0.13 divided by 0.425, and that gives us 30.6% iodide in each potassium iodide tablet. A big mistake here is some people will just say, well, it's Ki, so I just find the percent of iodide. No, that's not how we do that problem there. We need to go by our data because we analyze the precipitate. And again, all of these calculations could have been subject to the one-point sig fig check that they will do somewhere within the short answer questions. Last part here, or next part says, in another trial, the student dissolves the tablet in 55 milliliters of water instead of 50. Will the experimentally determined mass percent of iodide be greater than, less than, or equal to the amount calculated? Justify your answer. Well, if you think about it, whether you did 50 mils, 55 mils, 500 mils, as all we're looking at is we dissolve the tablet so we get all the iodide we need, then we put in the excess lead nitrate, so the lead and the iodide get together. All the water there is, is the medium, and we just got to get rid of it by doing the drying. So it would just probably take longer. So if you really think about it, the mass percent will be the same. The same amount of iodide is removed. It's, it was put in through the tablet, removed by the lead two ions that were added in excess, and all that extra water is just removed in the drying process. So too much more water would just extend how long it would take for us to filter and get our precipitate isolated, but it sh will not affect our mass percent. That should be the same. A student in another lab wants to determine the iodide content of a potassium iodide tablet, but does not have lead to nitrate. However, we do have silver nitrate. And that, of course, will react with iodide and produce silver iodide solid. KSP is 8.5 times 10 to the negative 17th. So that should indicate to you that silver iodide is not very soluble at all. <clears throat> that would be a good choice as a precipitate that you could gravimetrically analyze. So will the substitution result in the precipitation? Yes, and you should probably note that KSP value, whether by number or just by mentioning it. It's also an insoluble precipitate. We see the small KSP, so the same amount of iodide would be removed by silver added in excess, just as we did with the lead 2. 
the student only has access to one KI tablet and a balance that can measure to the nearest 0 0.01 grams. Will the student be able to determine the mass percent of silver iodide produced to three sig figs? And our last balance went to the thousandth, and that gave us three sig figs for all of our mass measurements when we subtracted. So I don't think we'll be able to do this. And there's a couple ways you can justify. The mass of our precipitate formed, which was 0.236 grams, would now only sh show up as 0.24 grams, two sig figs. Or look at the mass of the tablet. In our data table, the mass of the tablet was 0.425 grams. Now it would only show up as 0.43 grams, only two sig figs. So because of that balance, we would only be able to get an answer to two sig figs. All right. I hope this helps, and I'll see you soon.